بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آیت اللہ العظمى سید رضا بہاء الدینی رضوان اللہ تعالی علیہ Born on the 29th of March 1908 His father سید صفی رضائی Known as آسید صفی Among the pious people and like his forefathers Was blessed serving in the shrine of حضرت معصومہ at home. He was very well versed in Arabic grammar and recited 20 juz of Quran every day and pondered into the verses a lot, frequented a lot with the true divine ulama and was famous for being a mustajab da'wah, someone whose prayers are accepted and granted without delay. His mother, Fatima Sultan, from the family of Sadr al Muta'allihin, Mullah Sadra Shirazi, Rahmatullahi Alayh, a very pious lady possessing a high rank in Irfan. Before the birth of Sayyid Riza, she was blessed with a son who dies at the age of two. The grief stricken mother not only does not weep and cry upon the affliction, she performs a sajda of thanks and prays to the Almighty to bless her a son who could be among the great ulama of Imamiyya and among the awliya Allah. On the birth of Sayyid Riza and seeing his talent from his infanthood, she found that her prayers were answered. She invested all her might in educating and upbringing this gem and in blossoming the great ethical qualities in him. She was renowned for her spirituality, simplicity, love and respect towards her husband and family. And this enlightenment was bestowed through her acquaintance and memorizing of the Holy Quran and the du'as reported from Ahlul Bayt Ayatullah al-Uzma Baha'uddini says I was born in 1327 after Hijra, 1908 AD, and I remember exactly the incidents that unfolded before me when I was an infant just six months in my cradle. And I understood things when I was one and two years of age. I still remember that at the age of one I had to undergo a surgery to get a con removed. Everyone around me was terrified. All present around me and my cradle could not see it being removed. The surgeon applied the lancet and the surgical knife with a pointed double-edged blade and I was eased. I still remember the pains and the aches but little could I do. Marhum Hajaga Hussein, my brother, three years younger than me, I remember his birth, his crying, the place he was kept and the place where I was put to sleep, etc. As if everything is being replayed before me and I am watching it now. The Almighty blessed me with his ma'rifa at the age of two. From the age of one, I loved the pure people. I understood good and evil. And at that age, I could differ between the noble and the treacherous. My grandmother organized, conducted and recited for Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. I felt her enlightenment and I loved her. I wasn't two yet. My grandmother took me to a jashn held to observe the birthday of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. She recited and everyone recited with her. 
تولد شد محمد به دنیا آمد احمد It's the birth of Muhammad Arrival of Ahmad I understood this poetry then and I enjoyed it and since then I remember these phrases Ayatollah Bahauddini says At the age of two my father enrolled me at the maktab There I learned Surah Al-Hamd and the small surahs I was taught the Adhan and the Iqama, then reading the Holy Quran, and then I started to learn to write. My teachers at the Maktab were very dignified, learned and pious women that the Almighty had blessed me with. I started my studies in the Hawza of Qom at the age of seven. His association and friendship with Marhum Imam Khomeini Rahmatullahi Alayh was since he was 12 years of age. After Marhum Ayatullah Al-Ulma Burujirdi and Imam Khomeini's movement in Qom, it was widely known that he was his very staunch supporter. He always said that Imam must be helped, so much so that after his death, he wanted Marhum Imam to remain in the highest peaks of Marja'iyat and issued a fatwa allowing his Muqallideen to remain in his Taqlid and for the new Muqallideen to start his Taqlid. In support of the present leadership, he repeatedly said, he must be supported and helped. He once said, a delegation had come to visit me. They said, we have written a book on Wilayat Faqih. I said, Wilayat is neither to read nor write, it is bestowed. The blessing of Wilaya is among the greatest blessings. It is this Wilaya that will be questioned. Wilayat protects Islam, its roots and its branches. It is by the might of the divine men that the entire legislation including judiciary, education, spirituality, economy, politics, all get a divine appearance and navigate. Because a divine man heads the establishment, he is the pivot and the source, and all the rest is furu and secondary. Regarding the consequences of opposing Vilaya, he said, be very careful, Opposing Wilayat Faqih is not simple. When Mirza Shirazi the Great started his movement against the British Empire and issued the fatwa banning the usage of tobacco, an alim, a scholar, opposed him. Mirza cursed him. As a result, none from the progeny of that person were blessed being an alim. His young son died and the regret of him having an alim son remained with him. His word before the ulama. Sixty years ago I was asked about Aqaruhullah. What is he good for? And another person. I replied, Aqaruhullah is good for everything in Islam. But the other person will remain a good lecturer in the Hawza. He was offended for some time. Later he accepted saying, you were right. He was devoted to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam to Amir al Mu'mineen Alayhi Salam to Fatima alayha salam and her children. He said, Every goodness and blessing is from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Give much importance to salawat. You know, the Bashar Shastan. اگر بشر ساخته باشه بشر ساخته مثل انبیا مثل اولیا 
اینها زو افعار دستگیری می کنند نه زو افعار از پاده دارند حیوانات هم معمولند حیوانات هم مورد عذیت و آزار نیستن ها خداسه از سازندگی قرآن نسبت به فرد و اجتماع نسبت به نظام اجتماع حقوق اسلام جزا اسلام حدود اسلام قصاص اسلام و سازندگی افراد از عبادات اسلام سلات و سوم و حج و وجوه مالی و تجارت و اقتصاد و الاخر که اسلام کتاب یک دستور سازنده بشر بشر رو از حیوانیت میبردش اون جایی که دیگه ملائکه هم میگن خلاصه ما زرمون نمیرسه باش هم پرواز باشیم ولی در صورتی که عمل به کتاب بشه عمل به آداب اسلام بشه چقدر پیغمبر اسلام میخواد این بشر رو حرکتش بید. ولی اون میگن نه بیزارید ما همیجه باش بیزارید در همین شهوات خودمون خفه بش اونا میگن نه ما نمیذاریم شما در شهوات خفه بشی ما باید شما رو بلندت کنیم تا بفهمی که چه اشتباهاتی کردی مزدکار بشه محذب بشه از این هجاب هایی که هجاب از اجاب از مشاهده حقه سر تا سر عالم جمیع فعل و انفعالات جهانی همه آیات الهیه ولی به اشر با این آیات به خدا متوجه نمیشه نمیفهمه خدایی هم هست ولی اون علی علیه السلام اگه میگه به هر چه نگاه کردم جهت الهی را درش یافتم موانع همه مال این بشر تا این بشر گرفتار شهوات گرفتار حسد هاست گرفتار حرس هاست گرفتار رقابت هاست گرفتار تعارض هاست In his last days he was suffering from severe stomach aches medications were suggested by the well wishers In reply, he said, چه باید کرد؟ باید تسلیم شد. It's past these stages. What should be done? One must surrender. One must submit. كل من عليها فان. Everyone on it is perishable. He then said, for three times prior to this, I've been after excuses with the Almighty God. I was to depart long time ago. I asked Allah to allow me to remain. I know that the other side is better for us. Hence death I don't fear. Ayatollah Baha'uddin said, A week from today I will die and Salman and Abu Zar will attend my funeral. Another noble said in his funeral, Two men, those among the first and foremost, attended his funeral, but he did not mention who they were. This son of the skies of Irfan and spirituality sets on Friday, 18th of July 1997, 14th of Rabi'ul Awwal, 1418. According to the instructions of Ayatollah al-Uzma Khamenei, he was to be laid to rest in masjid al Sar in the shrine of Hazrat Fatima Ma'asuma alayha salam in Qum. Besides Ayatollah al-Uzma Araki and Ayatollah al-Uzma Shaykh Abdul Karim Ha'iri, the founder of the Hawza Ilmiya of Qum. 
The structural engineer of the building, another officer, said, This spot is all concrete and cannot be dug. A grave cannot be made here. Others said it's the command of the supreme leadership. A few said, allow us to dig. Should it be a grave or concrete, we'll fill it up again. Furthermore, Agha Bahaudini is not an ordinary person. The engineer said, if he is not an ordinary person, the earth should tear open for him. He said, you allow us to dig and see how a grave is prepared. Neither a grave existed there, nor any concrete, nor foundation bricks or beams, a spacious grave was dug. Those who knew every spot of the sacred shrine were amazed to see the grave. Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam says, إِذَا مَاتَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَبِقَاءُ الْأَرْضِ التي كان يعبد الله عليها وأبواب السماء التي كان يسعد فيها بأعماله When a believer dies, the angels and the places on earth wherein he worshipped Allah weep and the doors of the skies wherein he ascended from with his actions weep a notch will appear in Islam which nothing can fill the believers, the jurists, are the forts of Islam, like the forts surrounding a city.